Today, we're diving into the beating heart of cloud computing, resource pooling. It's not just a buzzword or a fancy technical term. It's the secret sauce behind why cloud providers can make those jaw-dropping promises about scalability, cost efficiency, and flexibility. But is it really as magical as it sounds? And more importantly, how do you ensure it works for your organization, not against it? Stick around because we're cutting through the hype and breaking it all down step by step so you can turn resource pooling into your ultimate competitive advantage. Here's the challenge. As an enterprise leader, decision maker, or architect, you're constantly bombarded with buzzwords, elasticity, multi-tenancy, serverless, distributed computing, you name it. These terms sound exciting, but let's be honest. They're often vague, overhyped, and full of technical jargon. And resource pooling, well, it's one of those concepts that everyone talks about, but few actually explain. But here's the thing, mastering resource pooling is critical because it's the foundation of how the cloud works and how it delivers value to your business. Let's start by painting a picture. Think back to the pre-cloud era. Back then, if you were running a business, you had to own your entire stack, dedicated servers, storage arrays, network infrastructure. Everything was physical and everything was on-premises. You paid for capacity you might only use a fraction of the time. It was expensive, rigid, and often wasteful. Now, fast forward to today's cloud-driven world. With resource pooling, that entire paradigm has been flipped. Instead of owning individual siloed resources, you now tap into a massive shared pool of compute power, storage, and bandwidth. It's like having access to a giant reservoir, one that scales up and down based on your needs. Sounds efficient, right? But before you start popping champagne, let's dig a little deeper. Here's the million dollar question. How does this actually work? Is this just a dressed up version of shared hosting? Or is there something more sophisticated happening under the hood? Spoiler alert, it's not just shared hosting. The magic lies in how cloud providers like AWS, Azure, and Google Cloud manage multi-tenancy. Let me break it down for you. Picture an apartment building. Each tenant, whether it's a family of four, a couple, or a single person, shares the same utilities, electricity, water, internet. They live independently but use common infrastructure. Cloud computing works similarly, except the utilities you're sharing are compute cycles, storage capacity, and network bandwidth. This shared model is what allows cloud providers to maximize efficiency while keeping costs lower for everyone. But here's the twist. This isn't just a utopia of endless resources. Sharing comes with its own set of challenges. Imagine what happens in our apartment analogy when all tenants decide to crank up their air conditioning during a heat wave. You might get uneven performance or worse outages. In cloud computing, this is what we call the noisy neighbor problem. One tenant's heavy usage can impact another's performance. And the challenges don't stop there. Think about data security. In a shared environment, how do you ensure that your sensitive data isn't vulnerable to other tenants or even to breaches within the provider's infrastructure? Compliance is another headache. If you're in industries like healthcare or finance, how do you meet stringent regulatory requirements in a multi-tenant environment? So what's the takeaway here? Resource pooling is powerful, but it comes with trade-offs. It can transform your IT costs into a predictable, scalable model. But if you don't manage it carefully, it can turn into a resource nightmare. Now let's shift gears and talk about what you can do to make resource pooling work for your business. Because you don't need to be a cloud engineer to navigate this. You just need the right strategies. Here are three actionable steps you can take today. Step one, right size your resources. Over-provisioning is one of the most common and costly mistakes in cloud computing. Think of it this way. If you're paying for a fleet of trucks but only ever need two, you're throwing money out the window. The same applies to cloud resources. Use tools like AWS Auto Scaling or Azure Monitor to analyze your workload patterns and adjust resources dynamically. This ensures you're paying for what you need and nothing more. Step two, segment your resources intelligently. Not all workloads are created equal. Your mission-critical applications, think customer-facing systems or financial platforms, shouldn't be lumped into the same resource pool as your test environments. Why? 
because noisy neighbors are much more tolerable in a sandbox than in a production environment. Tools like Kubernetes or containerization platforms allow you to orchestrate and isolate workloads based on priority and performance requirements. Step three, monitor and optimize continuously. Resource pooling isn't a set it and forget it game. It's a dynamic process and staying on top of it is essential. Regularly review performance metrics, cost reports, and SLA compliance. Platforms like Cloud Health or Google Cloud Operations Suite can give you real-time visibility into how your resources are being used and where you can optimize further. Here's the bottom line. Resource pooling isn't just a technical concept, it's a strategic tool. When aligned with your business objectives, it can unlock the full potential of the cloud, delivering cost savings, scalability, and flexibility. But to get there, you need to be deliberate. Understand the mechanics, anticipate the risks, and deploy the right solutions. So ask yourself, is your organization leveraging resource pooling to its fullest potential? Or are you still leaving value on the table? Found this valuable? Watch our playlists for more practical, executive level insights on cloud architecture and digital transformation, and leading your business into the next era of growth. Simplify the cloud, amplify the impact.